31, Sing to the Mountains, number 531. Please rise. We'll be singing verses 1 and 3. today. I'm not sure who all is having masses. I know they canceled to the west. I'm not sure about to the north, but uh, we're grateful you were able to join us today. We also have some special guests this morning, just like we did last night. Uh, last night was totally unexpected, but the uh, confirmation class from the United Methodist Church was part of our liturgy this evening, so it was nice to have them here. And today we are having the confirmation retreat for all six parishes, so I'm not sure how many youth from the other parishes were able to join us this morning, but welcome. Uh, immediately after Mass, they will begin their retreat experience that will go till, I think it's about 4 o'clock this afternoon. So uh, this is a way to begin the whole retreat experience for them. On this uh, fifth Sunday now of Ordinary Time, our readings today, especially the Gospel, deals with the call of the first disciples. And so as we prepare ourselves for this liturgy today, we take a moment to pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Your family safe, O oh Lord, with unfailing care, that relies solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated now to hear God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried one to the other, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin is purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, Christ appeared to more, than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as, one, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. And after he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. And Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him, and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a woman who had bought a potted gardenia and had put it in her living room. She fertilized it and watered it faithfully. And indeed, the leaves turned a, a rich green color, and the plant began to bud. But for some reason, the buds died one after another. And for six weeks, she tended the plant, hoping that at least one of the buds would bloom. But none ever did. And so discouraged, she put the gardenia outside, and as she did so, she regretted wasting all of her time and effort on that plant. In the days that followed, she began to run into a series of problems. First, there was a serious illness in the family. Then, a financial problem appeared. And then finally, a misunderstanding occurred with a friend and the more that she struggled with these problems, the worse they got. Nothing seemed to be going right for her anymore. And she was beginning to indulge in self-pity. Then one day when her depression hit an all-time low, she got together a basket of dirty clothes and decided to go downstairs to the laundry to wash her clothes. And as she shut the door and began to descend the stairs, she noticed a lovely fragrance filling the room. It was so lovely that she looked around to see where it was coming from. And when she went back upstairs and opened the door and looked out the window, she realized that her gardenia had a great big bloom on it, giving off that fragrance that she was smelling. All of her fertilizing, all of her watering, and all the care that she had given to that plant in the house was not enough for it to bloom. It needed one more ingredient. It needed the rays of the sun. And then she began to think about her own predicament in life. What was true for that gardenia was also true for her. All of her efforts to produce a solution to her problems was missing one key ingredient. 
Where her gardenia needed the rays of the sun, she needed God at work in her life. All of us have experienced moments in our lives when our work or our worrying has become useless. We've labored hard to solve some problem, but we find out it's not enough, that something's missing. For the disciples in today's gospel, their problem was solved when Jesus entered into their lives. After the miracle of the great catch of fish, we're told that they leave everything, abandon their way of life, and follow Jesus and engage in his ministry. For the gardenia, it was the arrival of the sun. And likewise for us, maybe the most important ingredient missing from our own lives and our own problems is that of God. And so our growing in faith question today on this fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time is simply this. Where is God in my life? This past week I began reading a book by Father Edward Hayes titled Pray Always. His central point is that we need to look for God in all things in life. That God's presence is all around us if we open our eyes and our hearts to the mystery of God. Now, one of the reasons that we have come to church today is that we want God present in our life. And believe it or not, when we come to church, God is present to us, not in one way, not in two way, but actually in three different ways. Our main reason for being a church today is because we want to be fed by the Eucharist on this altar. We've come to believe that in the Eucharist, Jesus gives us his very flesh and blood to be one with his love. Secondly, we come to this church because we want to hear the word of God. We know that God is present when his scriptures are read and proclaimed and shared in our lives. And the third way, which is the one that I think we overlook the most, is that God is present in each one of us, in our fellowship with one another. Whether we engage in a conversation with somebody prior to Mass or gather with them afterwards, God is present in that exchange and our fellowship with each other. And there are many other ways in which God is present to us. But for our confirmation candidates, as they begin their retreat today, we hope that they learn to appreciate the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit work in their lives. That whenever they open their hearts and their minds in prayer to the Lord, that the Holy Spirit is engaged with them, wanting them to be the best they can be, there to give them assistance and guidance and the various gifts that the Holy Spirit is capable of giving us. But it's up to us to open our hearts, to open our lives and to invite the Lord to be present to us. And that's the decision that we have to make for ourselves. Do we want to be disciples of the Lord today? Do we want God to be present and at work in our lives? And are we willing to allow that presence to enable us to share God's presence with others. And in that way, God becomes more visible, more active with his love for the world. As we challenge ourselves to discover and find God at work in our lives, we now stand and offer our prayers and needs this day. As we continue to search for God, we do so confident that God does indeed love us and is active in our lives.
We pray that our young people will listen to the Lord's call as they plan their futures, guide them as they choose their vocations and careers. We pray that some will choose a religious vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all who seek public office may acknowledge the law of God as higher than any human law or court. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the strength of the bishops to be holy shepherds in protecting and leading their sheep from all harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our 10th graders who are making their confirmation retreat this weekend. May they come to recognize the importance of this sacrament as they prepare for confirmation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our community of faith that we work together for the greater glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially Harvey Linen and Don Smiths, the special intentions of this Mass, and for Jane Getzinger, mother of Melissa Butker of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions in our prayer basket, for the sick listed in our bulletin, for our family members serving in the military, and for our own personal petitions that we now express in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, we pray the prayer for vocations found on the back of our missalettes. Lord of the harvest, your word finds a home in our hearts, calls us into community, and invites us to generous service of the human family. Bless with courage and spirit your priestly people, called to full participation in the one body of Christ. May many choose to respond in public service to your call, offered in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us be seated now for the preparation of gifts. Please join in singing number 383, The Summons, number 383.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. In your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O oh Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, 
of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, and all the bishops with the clergy and the entire people, your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, or the blessed Joseph, her spouse, or the blessed Apostles, Saint Michael and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 431, Be Not Afraid, number 431. Announcements. Reminder that uh, this Wednesday evening we will not have faith formation classes because it's midwinter break, so I'm sure the kids will enjoy having another evening off. That's. <laughs> hope it's a good evening for them. The uh, Flames and uh, Singing Group is still looking for voices to help out for the confirmation mass that's going to take place here on Saturday, March uh, 3rd. Uh, that will be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, all the teens are invited to support our 10th graders on their very special day as they open their lives to receive the gifts and the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. Uh, there will be additional practices uh, for our, our Flames group on February 20th and 27th from 5.15 to 6.30 here in the church those Wednesday evenings. The uh, faith formation classes are... Uh, participating and helping with the Least of My Brethren project, which serves the homeless in Council Bluffs in Omaha uh, by making fleece blankets uh, that will take place on February 27th. Uh, they are asking for donations of two to three yards of fleece or a cash donation so that fleece can be purchased. Envelopes are available in the pews of the church or on the table in the back, and there's a box for fleece to be brought to the church. Uh, we thank Chris T for his artwork on that fleece box, and more details are in the bulletin in regards to this project. So thank you for your generosity. The uh, St. Michael's Mardi Gras uh, dinner auction is coming up here the night before confirmation on Saturday, the 2nd of March. It'll take place at the Turkelson Center. 
Uh, that evening, we will move up the Mass from 5 to 4.30, so we'll continue to remind people that Mass will be 4.30 on that Saturday night. Uh, you should have received a letter in the mail this week with details in regards to our event. Uh, please return the form attached to the letter by Friday, February 22nd, and you can mail them to the parish office or drop them, at, drop them off at the office, or you can even put them in the collection basket at Masses on Sunday. Also, we continue to have available the end-of-year tithe statements for those who have contributed to St. Michael's Parish. Uh, they're on the table there in the back in alphabetical order, so be sure to pick up your copy and have it ready for your tax preparer this spring. The uh, last of the poinsettias uh, are wrapped and available on the southwest side of the church here. Uh, if you'd like to pick one up and take it home, feel free to do so. I want to thank Mary Claver and the liturgy people for a wonderful selection of poinsettias this year. They really were hardy and lasted for a long time, and so uh, we're very glad to share those with those uh, parishioners who would like to use them in their gardens and, and at home. And funeral arrangements have been made for Jane Getzinger. Uh, there will be visitation this afternoon from 4 to 8 o'clock at St. Boniface Church in Westphalia. Rosary at 7 o'clock tonight there at the church. And then the funeral mass will be tomorrow morning at 1030 at St. Boniface Parish. And we ask that you keep the family in your prayers. And I don't know, is Lorreen uh, Pusilek here? I didn't see her pop in the church. Are you around, Lorreen? There you are, very good. Lorreen would like to uh, share some thoughts in regards to the uh, study days that are taking place with the Matthew Kelly book that we passed out. So, Lorreen. Good morning. I would like to take this opportunity to personally invite you to join me today in the next um, five weeks to study the Matthew Kelly book, The Biggest Lie in the History of Christianity, if you recall that we received this during Advent. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to, um, for us to gather, and it's a very informal group, it'll be about from 4 to 5 o'clock or 5.30, to know how long this discussion goes at the parish office in the uh, conference room. And like I said, it's going to be an informal discussion. We're going to study about you know, four chapters each session. That'll get us. It's a very easy read. And I really hope to see some of you there. So I personally welcome you and, and um, look forward to hopefully seeing some of you. Thank you. Thank you, Lorreen, for hosting this study opportunity. As uh, I understand it right now, we've had seven people express interest to be part of the uh, study group. And, uh, so hopefully they'll get off to a good start here this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Let us stand and pray. Oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice? Grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is in it. Thanks be to God. Our sending song is number 499, Go Make a Difference, number 499. Make a difference. Go 